What's going on everyone? I'm back again. And as always, place the cross on first. I wasn't really finished talking this morning, but before I start, I still got to pray it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I don't think people realize how humble the Lord's disciples were. They left off doing everything. Home. Everything that the pious thing that they left off doing. And we think we got the bad as Christians these days. You see, they let the ground, they set the groundwork and play for us that, man, they did so much. You know, pat on the back to them. You understand? They were faithful to death. You know, a lot of us are not going to have to reach our earthly death through a horrible way like the disciples did. And the thing is, they did all this without earthly riches. Without fame, but shame. hated for so many but I'm sure they saw the fruits I'm sure they probably hated their lives on earth I'm sure they probably was like man this is horrible but they knew where they was going because of what they was doing and who they was doing it for they never had the just think about it a lot of, a lot of the wives lost their husbands while they followed after Christ you know we ain't got it near as bad as they had it. Nowhere near. Just speaking the truth, speaking of what you saw with your own eyes, speaking of what you believe. And look how weak we are. We fall away from anything just because somebody don't like what you're saying. You understand? They took it to the death. All of them, probably one, that didn't die a horrible death. Is that one of the possible sawn in half upside down? We think we got it bad out here. We ain't got it bad, we got it good. But you know what? You know why we got it good? Because others have paved the way for us. They did all the dirty work for us. So we need to be humble. We take a lot of things for granted. Take that car you drive for granted. Take that house you're in for granted. We take everything for granted. Lord, just please help me. Are y'all really gonna complain? Come on, man. Most of y'all got a cell phone. Two for some of you. Some of y'all got about four calls. Life's so hard. You understand? Don't get no big head. I'm telling you, but look, read the Bible. There weren't no physically rich disciples God was their provider that's where their hope come from you see that material preacher man I hate it because it distracts people from the truth it distracts people from what it's all about and you know what so the thing is if I hate it I'm sure the Lord hated too because he probably hated it first he did hate it first and I hate what he hates so hate me because they first hated him great you understand but in the midst of all that all the trials and trouble i'm sure they had some good times on the road laughing joking smiling you understand i'm sure they did but they don't really talk about that much in the bible so what am i getting at now i set you up for this christians forget how to have full joy yes be about your father's business but you know what when you start loving doing something, you're going to have fun doing it. You're going to have fun doing it. You are. You, are. you understand? You got to realize, read your Bible and figure out what you can do as a Christian and what you can't do. Read it, read it, read it. If you don't know, keep asking the Lord. He'll show you what you can do and what you can't do. You know, a lot of us Christians, we let people beat themselves up. Let people beat our, beat us up. 
Oh, you ain't right as a Christian. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. Read the Bible. You'll see what we can do. What we're allowed to do. According to your job title. Whatever job title God gives you. You know, we, we steady trying to model ourselves after people. That's the biggest problem we can ever do. Model ourselves after idols. Don't Like I said, don't model yourself after me. Don't model yourself about that motivational speaker. Don't model yourself after that preacher. Don't model yourself after the preacher's wife. Let God mold you. You understand? Let God mold you. Jesus set the example. Now look at look at the, the, the world we live in. See how many people are really following his example. I'm just being real. I'm sure I'm not even following it to the T. So that's why I'm saying don't even follow me. You can listen to the words I say if they're true or honest. But if I'm saying something wrong, you ain't got to listen to me. You know, people touch not, taste not. All these things, people. Christians beat up other Christians. I'm going to tell you why. Because they, they don't realize that you're the enemy to the promise. And like, how are you get, able to get away with such things? You're not getting away with nothing. Once you realize what is allowed. You know, I, I be at work sometimes and I can't get out the office. Just can't. And I'm starting to realize certain different things. You know, I can't get out the office. I'm stuck and now everybody be gone. So I got to be there. I can't leave for lunch. Can't do nothing. I know what you like, man, bring your own lunch. I'll tell you something. You ain't got you all that. Man, people are just brain food. But like, hey, I got this plate for you. I'm like, God is good. And guess what it'll be? Might be some ribs. Oh, man, I ain't eating these ribs. Pork. Pork, oh, Lord, Jesus. Hey, you better eat it. You better eat it, I'm telling you. I'm just telling y'all people. Can't get away from work. Stuff like that happens. Random encounters like that. Because God knows what you need before you ask of it. You know, some days I might get there and don't don't eat nothing. Just drink water all day. Maybe that's what he want me to do. Drink water. Maybe he want me to fast for from 8 to 5. Or to 6. That's the normal time I normally make it home between 5.30 and 6 o'clock. If I get home at 5.30, I'm probably not eating. You know, fasting is really a 12-hour thing. A lot of people don't look at that. You see, God lets you know when to fast and when not to when to eat, when not to eat, what to eat, what not to eat. He'll let you know in the spirit. You see, y'all are trying to justify yourselves through the law, and you can't. You see, God poured out his spirit to give you the ultimate guidance system. You know how missiles, once they see their target, they're going to go there. They ain't going to stop till they hit their target. That's the Holy Spirit when it comes to us. It guides us directly to where we need to go, what we need to do, what we need to say, and whatever. That's why you don't got to meditate on what you got to say beforehand. Like, let's take this afternoon. I know for a fact, according to what's been going on in my workplace today, a lot of people are going to be gathering at the house next door to me. Now, first thing I can remember, I mean, company's going to be all around. So I'm like, like I said, God has set the stage. Now, what am I going to do? Don't worry about it. Look how he'll start bringing things to you. You know, I remember when I first got into the house that God put me in right now, I was like, man, this is so boring. Nobody can never comes around. Then my next door neighbor that happened to be my cousin, she, has, she brings a lot of company around. And uh, most of the company is family. They get together, they play cards, they do such things. But I'm next door. What are the odds of that? I'm like, what in the odds of me getting right here? But for a whole year, it was nothing. Now it's like every weekend. I tell people all the time, you better enjoy them breaks when you get them. Because God is setting up something way greater than you. And the thing is, now, he want to see if you're going to do and behave yourself how he's been training you to behave yourself. You understand? It's very simple. And the thing is, and it's a joy to be around people sometimes. And it's boring not to be around people sometimes. God, like I said, God's trying to balance you out. 
whenever God gives you a time period or a time frame when it's just you sitting alone, just remember he's training you. He's preparing you for something way bigger and way deeper than you can ever imagine. You understand? I used to try to make plans. Like, one thing I, I like to do, but I don't do it a lot, I'm going to tell you what it is, fishing. And I, I always like, I want to go fishing. But I never go. And I wake up in the morning, I'll be like, Lord, I want to go fishing. Not this week. I'm like, what? It don't make sense. It's just fishing. I got something else for you to do. Whatever it may be. Same way with Peter them. Hey, I want to go fishing. All right. When they went fishing, he went to them and told them, hey, it's time to get back to work. I made you fish as a man. There'll come a time when I'm sure the God, God's going to let me go fishing. But when God is working on you, a lot of things you want to do, you ain't going to do. And a lot of things that you ain't planning to do, you're going to do. It is what it is. But Christians are so, these new age Christians, I'm telling you, they be watching these two people on TV perform and they see them all gl glamorous and glitterful, fancy clothes and this and like that. But you know what I don't see about a lot of these motivational speakers? They really don't talk about real things. <laughs> they leave a lot of stuff out. So when people look at them, they look at them like, look at those perfect people on TV. That's who I want to be like. Because they don't talk about what goes on in regards to many other things. They just got to say the right things to keep you paying that $75 fee for this conference. I'm just being real with you, people. They got a quota to meet. And they got to sell out houses. And the thing I don't notice, about, I realize about a lot of these they go to town to town saying the exact same speech, rehearsed speech, exact same rehearsed speech, exact same rehearsed speech, exact same rehearsed speech. You might watch the video, but it'll be the same video told, spoken a little differently. And I don't feel that spirit led. Me, that's personal. I believe that's financially led. You understand? They go through this. Okay, you're going to do this first. You're going to say that. You're going to say that. Then I'm going to come in. And then you got the all same Bible, same verses lined up. Ever since I've been following after Christ, it's never been that way with me. I'm just trying to figure that out. I'm like, why haven't I had to do that? Why haven't I sat down and studied what I'm going to talk about for weeks and then stay on that and keep doing the same video over and over again to make money off people? I'm, I'm just saying that never happened to me. So when I watch people on TV that do these things, it, it bothers me. Now, I'm not saying that babies in Christ might not need to hear that. But it's time to grow. You understand? Yes, the Bible is repetitive. But I'm just saying, if you stick it to a same rhetoric, every sermon, that means you're trying to push certain agendas. I'm just being real with you people. But those are the people that make Christians that walk out here in the, in the world and go out and do things in the world and not on the platform, people will look at us like, you ain't doing what they doing. Look at them. They got a thousand people out there talking. But are they bearing any fruit? They got a lot of people paying attention. But they don't talk about that. You see, one thing about y'all, us as the Christian, we got to realize that everybody got different walks. You know, everybody got different walks. And until you realize this, you're going to try to model yourself. You're going to start thinking everybody needs to be on the big screen. Everybody's not going to be on the big screen. You know how many apostles, I mean disciples in the Bible that are not in the Bible? There are so many that went out, that name ain't even brought up. Because it's not about that. It's not about your name being recognized. It's about his name being recognized. But I listen to people who say, like they'll watch these motivational speakers. They'll be like, so-and-so said this. Hmm, so-and-so said that. You see how Jesus start fading to the back? T.D. Jakes said this. Hmm. Joel Osteen said that. Joyce Myers said this. 
You, you got to pay attention to this. Who are you listening to? Are you listening to them? Are you trying to hear the word? Are you molding yourself after them? Are you trying to mold yourself for the word? Because there's a lot of motivators out there. A lot of motivators. But how many people are real? You know, I know what you're finna say. You know, I say this so many times. Well, as long as the gospel is free. Keyword, the gospel. Everything. Me personally, I think every conference should have a different topic. Every sermon should be a little different from the other. That's what I believe. Not exactly the same. Not a syllabus guided motivational speech. Some things got to come from the dome. Sometimes the best thing, the best talk way to talk to people is fall off the head with no mistakes. That's why I don't edit my videos. What you hear, what you get. I don't edit them. You know what God tell me to do when I get from the recording? Load it up and leave it there. Don't edit it. Don't change it. Keep it as it is. As honest and true and sincere as it is. Unscripted. Straight up there. But that's how you're going to be in this world. I keep telling people, that's how you're going to go out. You're going to go out in an unscripted environment. You don't know how kind of people in a perfect, just think about a stage. That's the perfect, most perfect environment in the world. You got you on the stage and everybody else in the audience. You ain't got to make no physical contact. You ain't got to go out there and talk to each individual person. That's the easiest platform to, to talk on. But what about when everything's going on around you? You got this person over there doing that. You got this person over there doing that. And you got to use your discernment to figure out who God wants you to talk to. That's ministry to me. I don't know what that is. But so it's, it don't sit right with me. I'm just being real with you people. I'm trying to tell y'all something. You see, y'all looking for ministry through the television a lot of times. You understand? And then you start watching these people on TV. And then you start getting hateful. You're like, why in the world are you getting hateful now? You got to pay attention to that. Like, why am I acting like this after I watch that? Something ain't right here. Some shit starts sitting up in your mind like, maybe it's this video and not the person. Maybe it's that. I'm just being real. You know, when I first started going to church, that's how I used to be. I used to go to church and I look at people who didn't go to church and I'd be angry at them because they didn't go and be mad. I'm like, what kind of spirit did I just inherit from this church? And I'm asking you right now, what kind of spirit are you inheriting when you're watching these videos? It might not be the holy one. Because now you're angry and bitter. <laughs> and no joy in your life. Now you feel funny. Now everybody you around, some doing something to you. I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all this because that's how I went through it. I had to grow away from that. You understand? How long do you expect to behave, stay a baby in Christ? It's time to grow up and do what God called you to do instead of trying to mold yourself after these motivational speakers. But that's all they are. Most of them don't even tell the whole truth. They tell you just what they want you to eat up. They bounce around scripture to make it look like they know it. But it's all rehearsed. Most of them are actors, showmen. That's all they are. That's all they are. Convincing you that they something that they ain't. But you're going to see it. And you're going to realize it one day. And the thing is, people, when God revealed it to you, don't be shocked. Because there's a lot of false teachers and false prophets out there. They'll be like, oh, I ain't preaching. But get up there and start preaching. I'm like, Something ain't right here. You see, I tell y'all these things because I go through these things. I'm trying to warn you beforehand. It's up to you to see it. It's up to you to see it, people. Because if not, you're going to keep fooling yourself and fooling yourself and fooling yourself. And you keep following these people who uh, ain't doing nothing but misleading you. They're not. You know, God tells us so many times to beware of wolves and sheep clothing. 
But why don't we pay attention to that? That's one of the things we overlook more than anything. The wolves in sheep clothing. We think everybody that say Lord, Lord is of God. You better pay attention. There's some good teachers out there. There's some false teachers out there too. But you need discernment to realize who's real and who's fake. And whoever God wants to remove from your life as far as who you've been following after, you better see what he's showing you. You better see what he's showing you. I've been there. When I first became a Christian, that's how I was. I wanted the word so bad, I was like, I got to hear from somebody else. And then I was like, man, I just read this and that one, okay. And then eventually the Lord was like, you know what? Study yourself now. Now the journey begins. You're starting to wake up to the truth and the knowledge thereof. Now class is really for the beginning. When you start getting that discernment that you didn't have before, trying to figure out how to test the spirits. It's not that you're trying to figure out that you you're better than them, but don't you want to grow? Or you want to be on a tutor your whole life? I'm just trying to tell y'all something. That I've been realizing. Are y'all really seeking after y'all? Y'all find that one person that y'all like to listen to, and then y'all get stuck under them, and now you're idolizing them. You stay under that schoolmaster too long. I'm telling you, it's gonna mess you up. That's all I got for you. That's it for today, people. Have a blessed one.